Okay, car's back from paint and the stickers have been reapplied. So it looks an awful lot like it used to before I destroyed it. Pretty cool. All right, back in the shop after uh, two and a half months of working around the clock um, at work. So finally was able to start taking some time um, and getting back on the Javelin project. So the Javelin's painted, restickered. It's basically all, it's all back together, it's ready to go. But one of the things that's been bothering me since I put it together was how high the right height is. And uh, I've been really wanting to figure out how to get it lower. And I called Al a control freak um, about a month ago while I was still working all the time, you know, trying to plan for, for this fall. Saying, Al, I've got to get the car lower. I want to get these wheel whip drop spindles. Can I just buy them, throw them on, and uh, then, you know, adjust the, uh, the steering linkage to, to match up? And he was like, um, let me get something together for you to make that all work. And so what he ended up doing was sending me a new cage, completely new cage. Um, I guess I was one of the very first people that uh, bought his IFS system. And since then, they've made a few changes and a few improvements. So he sent me a new cage. Uh, sent it to me bare instead of powder coated, which was fine. I'm just going to rattle can it. Um, I'm not sure all the changes that, that um, have been made versus uh, his original. Al originally designed this to work with a uh, manual rack, and uh, I, I wanted a power rack. And so he specced a, a Thunderbird power rack for me to use. But when I used it, I had to end up ovaling his holus out a little bit. And my original cage also had uh, nuts already well tack welded on the back, uh, and I had to cut those off um, to be able to roll these up uh, to be able to get the rack to, to get on. It wasn't that big a deal, but Al's now reconfigured this a little bit. The, the nuts are not welded on the back, and he says this is ready to go for um, for the power rack. And then I got new upper and lower control arms. Um, so I maybe change the geometry a little bit. I'm not sure. One thing I'm going to have to do is. My lowers are, are, are um, modified. They have a bracket on the bottom that we welded on for the sway bar that I'm using. And um, these obviously don't have that, so I'm gonna have to um, redo that work to use these. Um, but this is all about using, getting these on the car, which are these Willwood two inch drop spindles. Um, and Willwood has them now. There's, they're, they're called their whatever two inch drop pro spindles and um, they're not handed. You can use them on the right or left side and they have these steering arms that you can reverse so you can put them on whichever side you need. Um, this here I'm sure this is Al's uh, handiwork and this has been this piece has been machined uh, and added to the steering arm to preserve the uh, steering geometry that Al's designed in the system. So, really exciting, um, and at first I was kind of like, oh man, this is going to be a lot of work to switch over, but I think I just have to suck it up because um, the car just needs to come lower. The car uh, at the Rockers is nine inches, it's like eight and three quarter in the rear, or nine in the rear, and eight and a half, or eight and three quarter in the front. It's, it's about a half inch rake on the car, but um, American Iron Rules say that I can be down as low as uh, five inches. So nine inches is kind of crazy. Um, I just need to get lower, and this is hopefully gonna get me there. So there's only six bolts that hold the cage in. Um, so I'm gonna actually try to suspend my engine from, uh, take the carb off, put a lift plate on it, and use my engine hoist, hold the engine in place, and actually try to drop this whole thing out from the bottom. I'll disconnect the upper uh, control arms at the body mount. And I'll get the springs, uh, the spring shock, the coilover loose uh, at the top as well. And the six bolts, and obviously the steering rack will have to come off, and the brakes. But in theory, then this, the whole cradle will drop out, and then I can just pop this one in and start um, bolting everything back on. So anyway, that's the theory, um, but Christmas in uh, early September here, thanks to Alec Control Freak. 
something else I wanted to mention is um, how organized everything is that came from Control Freak. All the hardware is tagged and bagged, um, and that's going to make it super easy to put everything together. So uh, that was really cool to see. Um, and yeah, just read the label, you know where everything goes, and uh, so it all should go together pretty quick. Um, I'm going to uh, sand the, and degrease these pieces, um, hang them, and then uh, spray paint them. And then after that, I'll be ready to start assembling them. All right, so I got all the control arms cleaned up here. I'm using my engine hoist as a paint rack, and I got everything hung, and I'm just going to rattle can it with some uh, primer seal. Let's go. Alright, so last night I got the uh, control arms painted and tonight I'm going to do the cage. And these are the fuel cell straps. So I'm just going to get those done too along got the can of prime right off. Alright, here we go. Alright, so I got the new IFS uh, all painted. I missed a couple of spots, but um, it's good enough. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start trying to uh, pre-assemble some of the various parts. And I think I'm going to start with the uh, rod ends for the uh, upper control arms. So right here, nicely labeled. Uh, and I'm going to use some never seize on the threads. Just to make sure that they can come back out when I need to. All right, so Got the rod ends in the upper control arms, and now I'm going to put the upper ball joints in. Here, in this box. So on this one, I'm going to grease the threads. One thing Al told me was on these new upper control arms, there's a, a recess here machined in, which uh, mine didn't have, and that's going to allow the boot to go on and sit in there nicely. Uh, just like that. It's great. All right, so I got the front control arms assembled, got the rod ends in, got the ball joint in, um, got the grease fitting in. So these are good to go. I'm going to put them to the side now, and I'm going to put the ball joints in the lower control arms. All right, I switched benches over here. I'm still working on this uh, lower control arm. Thought I'd show this part. So this is just the rubber boot, and then there's a recessed um, pocket here in the lower control arm that's supposed to take this boot. I think Al mentioned this to me on the phone and I forgot um, that they changed up the boot dimensions on him and, and the boot that came with this uh, ball joint doesn't quite fit in the um, recessed pocket anymore. So I'm actually just going to um, grind off a little bit of this outer hard rubber edge and I'm going to do it on my bench grinder. I just thought I'd show that. <laughs> Squeak. 
I'm going to use my uh, vice to get these bushings, to, bushing sleeves to see it actually. Almost do it by hand. But let's see, I'll try to finish it off with the vise. One side. All right, so now I am um, attaching the lower control arms to the cage. I flipped the cage over uh, to make it easier to get to it. Uh, and actually I had to pick my angle grinder and um, grind back some of the uh, rubber on the bushing here. I also had to take five pound sledge and just uh, give one of these uh, tabs a um, little whack to kind of move it just a little bit so that I could get these in. Um, so now I'm going to open up the uh, hardware pack and put the bolts in. I'm going to go ahead and snuck these up. Alright, so moving along with this uh, lowering project, I have the old control freak IFS cage out. Uh, this is how I dropped it down, um, kept everything, kept the lower control arms attached, just disconnected the upper control arms at the body, six bolts, one, two, three, four, five, six, and dropped the whole thing down. Obviously, I took the rack off the, uh, the front of it, steering rack. Um, but what I wanted to show here was that um, when I got the cage, this tube wasn't here. This tube went from here to here. And I have a uh, Aviad seven quart road race oil pan. I'm running an AMC 360 motor. And I have an external uh, oil pickup feed line. So coming out of the side of the pan, I have a dash 12 AN line, which is pretty thick. Uh, it comes out the side of the pan uh, right about here and comes over to the uh, oil pump. This tube interfered with that. I couldn't get the cage installed with that line there. Um, and so what we did was we cut that tube and we just flipped it and then um, trimmed it a little bit and welded it this way. Uh, and when I got the new cage, new cage was the same way. The tube went this way, uh, it interfered, so I had to do the same thing. I had to cut it out and flip it. So I just wanted to show that if anybody out there um, with a control freak IFS is going to run an ADI pan with an external line, you're probably going to have to do this mod. I guess it depends on, on uh, where, where the line uh, comes out of the side of the pan and how it's run or whatever. But for my setup, uh, I just cannot work with the tube there, so it's flipped around. Okay, so the new cage is installed. Um, it was a lot of fun. Had to take it in and out several times. Um, like I said, I had to flip that tube around. For some reason, I had thought that um, Al had tweaked the design a little bit and that I wouldn't have the same interference problem with, the, uh, with my Dash 12 oil line coming out of the side of the pan, but I did have the same problem, so I had to bring it back out, cut that tube, flip it, re-weld it like I did with the old one. Um, so then I got it to this point, cage's in, upper control arms are in, steering rack is in, uh, and I just threw this on here. Um, it doesn't need to be right on. But anyway, I got to this point, and the next step was to install the coilovers. So I grabbed the coilover and started trying to get it installed. Um, I tried to snake it through a bunch of different ways. Anyway, I spent like two hours trying to get this thing in. Uh, I actually did get it in. You can see some of the, maybe see some of the paint chipped on here or whatever. Um, but it just didn't seem right. It was just so hard to do and so jammed up in there. Uh, so I, I called up Al and he immediately remembered that I have 10 inch springs and I guess I need nine inch springs with this setup. So um, yeah. So that was never going to work. So he sent me nine inch springs and uh, they finally came in. So 
Uh, I'm going to go over the bench now and uh, swap these coilovers out, swap these 10 outs for 9, and then see if I can actually get the coilovers in, which I assume I will be able to. And at that point, I think today I should be able to get this car back down on its wheels. All right, so back at the bench, here are the coilovers. Here are the new 9-inch springs. So let's get this done. Okay, and um, so these are 850s, 10-inch springs. These are 9-inch springs or 750s. I wanted to tweak the, uh, the spring rate. Um, you can see they're shorter a little bit. And the way I'm going to get these off and these on is to actually use uh, ratchet straps. So I'll show how I do that. First thing I'm going to do is run these collars down, loosen up the spring. Alright, so I got the two ratchet straps on, got it um, snugged down. Not really that much. All you're trying to do is get enough clearance so that you can pop this top collar off. There you go. Okay, so now the spring will just come off. And you put your new spring on. This one's a lot shorter so I can run the collar up. Um, it's a lot easier. Clip back on. Okay. I'll just put this back up. Okay. One down. One to go. All right, so I'm back at the car. I have the coil over with the new nine inch springs. And I'm gonna hope that this is a lot easier to uh, get on the car than the 10 inch was. Um, one thing you wanna do is make sure, this is a double adjustable shock. You wanna make sure both of your knobs are um, accessible. So that means on the bottom, you want the knob facing in towards the center of the car. On the top, you want it facing out towards you. Uh, all right, here we go. Okay, I think that's almost in. I'm gonna go get some pry bars and some hardware uh, and get it bolted in. One side in, go do the other side. All right, so it was a lot of work, but phase one of going for low is complete. Um, I got the IFS cage swapped out and I put in shorter nine inch springs in the front and with two inch drop spindles. And I lowered the uh, coilovers down as far as they would go, and I lowered the car down on the ground, and I was able to get uh, it down to six inches in the front. And in the front, I've been measuring up here, right at, at the point where this uh, rocker arm, uh, rocker panel, I should say, um, comes to a point. And at that height, basically the car wouldn't have been drivable. There was uh, the wheel wasn't able to be turned and um, the fender lift was interfering. The exhaust was barely three quarters of an inch off the ground. Um, and in the rear, I was uh, I took the coilovers down as far as they could go and I could only get the seven and three quarters in the rear. Um, so I swapped out the 14 inch springs in the rear for 12 inch springs. And so what, what I ended up doing was um, I raised the front back up one inch, so I got the seven in the front, and with the shorter springs, I was able to get the seven in the rear. 
And that's where the car is now. Um, it's about level, I think I have a seven and an eighth in the rear. Uh, I'm gonna have to readjust these slightly once uh, there's more weight in the car. Uh, there's no gas in the car right now. There's no driver in the car. So I wanna scale it and uh, tweak the ride height um, with, uh, with some weight in the car. But still, I think uh, a success got from nine inches at this point, which is crazy, to seven. Um, that started to feel a little bit more something. I mean, I don't know until I get on the track, but it should help handling the car a lot. Um, I did roll the inner fender at our friend's baseball bat uh, and did that. Um, that gave me some more uh, clearance. I still need to do that in the rear um, now that I'm at seven inches. Uh, so what's left before I can get this car back on track in this new configuration is um, I need to redo the front sway bar. Uh, ditching the old solid um, spline sway bar with steel arms and I got a speedway engineering hollow bar with aluminum arms. Takes 15 pounds off the front of the car and I think is going to allow me to do a, a better packaging in the front sway bar. So that's next on the list. And then the last piece of the puzzle that's concerning at this ride height is the headers uh, and the exhaust are uh, there's a couple of spots that are actually below two inches, or about an uh, inch and three quarters. Um, so I'm going, I'm considering swapping the, the headers. There are long tube Doug's headers, inch and three quarter, and um, I bought a set of Headman Jeep headers. I don't really know if they're going to fit in this chassis, I'm hoping they will. And um, they are, they're not shorties, but they're not full length. I, I, I'm calling them mid length. And, uh, I'll show you a shot of them, but th that's what's next. The sway bar and the exhaust, and hopefully at that point, um, this car will be ready to go on track at the new ride height, and uh, we'll see what it does. Um, now, with the front and rear coilovers, I do have room to go lower, but I, as I said, um, I think at that point, I'm gonna, there's gonna have to be even more work done to uh, allow the car to work any lower than right where it is right now at this seven inches. So that's the update and that's that's it for this phase of the project and I'll, I'll do a video on the um, on the sway bar and then probably on the, uh, the head swap as well. All right.